So we'll continue uh, with the B cells. <coughs> so far, we've been talking about markers that are expressed on the surface. Remember that most of the immune system deals with the receptor expressed on the surface. Because remember, when they talk to each other, when a cell talks to another cell, they actually see whatever is exposed. So they, it needs to bind and dock in before the signaling pathways goes on. So uh, let's talk about those specific membrane proteins. But also keep in mind that I would uh, divide that into those expressed on the surface of uh, these cells those protein which pass through the membrane and then cytoplasmic protein and so on and so forth right so there is a there is a uh, what you call a signal there that goes all the way from outside in and these are molecules okay now uh, as you can see <clears throat> so now there's what things is going to get rough and tough so this is a b cell surface right this is a b cell surface and you can imagine that uh, your book says important molecules express the surface of B cell. See text for details. But these are not the only ones. When we will teach you uh, immunopharmacology or whatever subject it, it is, then you will see that uh, <coughs> these are all proteins. We, we play with them. So these are our, our playing molecules. And uh, I'm going to help you to understand, recognize, but these are those things that are expressed on B cells, but also keep in mind, as I said earlier in the previous slide, in a lymph node or in a tissue, B cell is talking to T cell, B cell is talking to dendritic cell, and B cell is talking, it's like family, everybody's talking to each other. So there's a communication thing, right? It's like something they see, something they touch, something they hold, something they hold it tight, Something they hold with one hand, something they hold with two hands, something is covalent. So in terms of chemistry, these are important. So let's begin. It starts with the top on the B cell receptor. It's called BCR. We already discussed that. It's nothing but a antibody. Okay. And then again, it again has a heavy chain, a light chain. We already know that. It sits on the membrane by the FC portion. And then there is a, as I said, co-pilot. I just use the like a co-pilot in this way that uh, this is an immediate attached molecule to that but the idea is this is like a I wouldn't say bank locker I do have a bank locker but they just have two keys one key I have another they have but at the most they have two keys to open whatever treasure I don't have any treasure though is there in my bank but the B cell has a lot of keys and for good reason, because it doesn't want to respond to every antigen. It has to be very, very specific. Just allow, you have to satisfy all these criteria of bonding before T cell or B cell will activate. Okay? Now, you can learn it any way you want. I, I, I think the easier way for you to learn is that what is a receptor that binds with an antigen? What are the receptors that they bind with the T cell? What are the receptors they bind to dendritic cell, so and so forth. So cell to cell based. Okay. And also remember, it's not like a casual touch and go. It's a bonding where signal has to transfer. Okay. Now, one concept you have to have is that uh, antigen will only bind to this one. Antigen would not bind to anything else. There's only one antigen binding site. But don't think that in this cartoon it just says one antibody. Not necessarily. There could be more than them. So there will be tons of receptors. It's like a ball. The cell is like a ball. Okay? Now, the very first thing I want to impress upon you is a B cell co-receptor. So these are the co-receptor. It's just like this. This is a pilot. So it has one, two, three, four different co-receptor. And the purpose of this co-receptor is, another slide I'll explain that to you, they are like uh, 
the accelerators, the enhancers, right? So these are, it says, enhances signal transduction through BCR. So whatever is being transmitted over here, they are like enhancer there. It's like a signal, you know, sometimes you have this routers or Wi-Fi, and then you have the boosters for enhancers. So the signal can be enhanced. So that's a known fact in immunology as well. Now, since they have a specific shape and form, and since they are numbered, guess what? We will have some drugs against them. Because sometimes we want to speed them up, and sometimes we want to slow them down. Okay? So, 19, 21, 81, and 225. And they all are CDs. Okay? So, 19, 21, 81, 225. I will not go in details, but you can tell by the shape of it that uh, most of them have two portions. One is exposed to outside the cell, extracellular, and they have an intracellular, and then they, they have uh, intramembranous because the cell membrane as well. Okay? So it passes through, and some of them may not have, like for example, this one may not have a, an exposed thing. So something that is exposed, we call it domain which is a domain. So, a domain jutting out of the membrane, a domain within the membrane, and domain inside the membrane. So, this is like a signaling pathway. Okay? Now, it says molecules that interact with T cells, and I just gave a mnemonic, let's say, high five. Right? It's like, hey, so five of them. I mean, that's what, so, so these are one, two, three, four, and the five will come in the other one, or actually it's over there already, cyt cytokine. So one, two, three, four, five, as I said, just for basic introductory immunology is good enough, but don't think they're only five. Just to begin with, so you know that these are some of the targets that we have. Number one, if B cell wants to talk to a T cell, right? So B cell wants to present a, let's say, uh, a antigen which is protein to a T cell so what would the B cell do because this T cell doesn't want to take anything unless and until it's presented in a plate and it's a protein so B cell has to present that in context with MHC okay now this is MSC class 2 and I'm going to explain that to you in the coming lecture after immediately after that MSC so MSC class one and class two, and I'll tell you what are the difference, but right now remember it's MSC class two, which actually binds to the TCR of CD4 T cells or whatever cell. So there is a TCR. So remember the BCR of B cell does not bind to TCR of T cell because both have to bind to an antigen. BCR, a TCR of T cell will bind to MSC class two. Okay, so if these are the two major players, you can see you have this player over here is the BCR and it has co-receptors. So this come with this team pilot and four co-pilot. Over here as well, when a B cell talks to a T cell, the very first thing T cell asks for, where is my protein? Where is my food? And then all other are side dishes, sides. But T cell needs sides as well. So that's not enough. It's like appetizers. So it has at least one, two, three, four different co-stimulatory molecules. And I can tell you right now the drugs that I'm working on in my project and research and many other people are something to do with co-stimulatory molecules. And some of them are already marketed. So this is a hot area co-stimulatory molecules. So that's what we say, co-stimulatory molecules. And as the word suggests, uh, they are going to stimulate what's going on over here, right? Now, these are, again, I would want you to remember the name CD40, B7, 
icos and cytokine receptors so these are the four one that are important and they are keys for example but remember that you have to rem i will teach you separately b cell and t cell and say these are the four receptor b cell engage with the t cell and these are the four receptor that T cell engage with B cell, but by the end of the day, I would want you to know the corresponding receptors. Okay, so in this case, if I was to ask you, CD40 is present on B cell and that interacts with a ligand on T cell, which you'll call CD40L. L is for ligand, right? If it's a B7 on a B cell, it is going to interact. <laughs> with the two ligands on T cells. Right now, the, the, the therapy for rheumatoid arthritis is that we are giving a uh, blockers of CD28, for example. So that CD28 blocker, which is out there in the market, is something which is expressed on a T cell, but this needs to talk to B cell. And as I said earlier, they may have a other CD name. I don't want you to remember that. But for now, remember, and I'm going to show it in the next slide for you to remember, that B7 of B cell interacts with CD28 or CTLA4. These are the two, two important things. And I'm going to come back to it to tell you why and how we use the drugs and so on and so forth. Then there is ICOS ligand. That interacts with activated T cell, and then there are cytokine receptors, which are tons of cytokines from IL-2, IL-4, IL-5, gamma interferon, tons of cytokines that the cells release, but they all act like hormones and they bind to each other. Then there are some other molecules I put like home, like homing molecules. So this means if a lymph node has picked up an antigen, Okay, let me give you an example for the breast cancer. If the lymph node has picked up a cancer from the sentinel load of the breast and it's seen the cancer and everything needs to process and the processing happens in, in bone marrow, for example, you now the cell that is made in bone marrow needs to know to go back to where it was originated from. So this information for the cell to go back where it was originated from is something we'll call homing, homing pigeons, like something like that. So it has to go back to the same place where it was originated. This process is called homing. But again, the process is just because of the receptors. So these are some receptors. If you remember when I was teaching you um, neutrophil attachment, so we talked about integrins, selectins, something expressed in the neutrophil, something expressed in the endothelium, both locked together, bring the neutrophils in. So these are those stable receptors that you can see from here. They are very important and they are exhibited in specific tissues. So this means that integrin is there in a tissue and even if you make a cell or a B cell or an antibody, it's going to come back home to where it was originated from. So this is a process we call homing. Homing to lymph nodes or specific tissue where, want, where you want to generate an immune response. You want to lose the cells all the way through. Okay? Now, I repeat, is a B cell receptor surface proteins, and all of them you can see are amino acid proteins, very precise shapes and form. We'll discuss some of them, not all, but when we go and teach you the drug action, we may want to go a little bit detail in terms of biochemistry. So uh, T cell, a B cell receptor, a co-receptor, molecules that interact with uh, T cell, the major one, co-stimulatory one, other molecules that are there for homing, okay? To uh, recap, as I said, that co-receptor, -co so these are important, 21, 19, 81, and 225. So maybe you want to remember the number. These are important co-receptors. So if you want to do something, because by the end of the day, uh, if you want to produce antibodies or you want to stop production of antibodies, whatever you want to do, you have to have all these switches. So these are kind of players that you work with in terms of uh, uh, 
core cell receptor because it will enhance signal transduction. So it's going to help the pilot, which is over there. Now, when I said the molecules that interact with T cell about high five, so the major one, the rule of the thumb, that's what they say in English, the rule of the thumb. So it's like thumbs up. You, they said in like everything's good enough. Just, I'm ready to go. So the thumbs up for the T cell is the MSC. It's going to thumbs up only if you give MSC. If no MSC, it's going to thumb down. Okay. So CD40, B7, ICOS, four of these have to interact with the T cell. And as I said, they are expressed on B cell. Now we need to find out the corresponding receptors on the, on what? T cell. So you can see from here. So MSC binds to the antigen. CD40 binds to the ligand. B7 binds to CD28. But remember I said in my previous slide, CD28 or CTLA4. And uh, the difference is CD28 is accelerator and CTLA4 is a brake. So sometime you want to slow down a car, the very first thing you want to take your foot off the uh, accelerator. So this will slow you down. If you need, then you have to press the, uh, the brake. So that's where the immune reaction is. Sometimes you want to do that because we, want to, we have a very organized and controlled thing. That's what we do. Then we have cytokine receptors for B cell, IL-4 and gametron, interferon. Uh, if you remember when I taught you, I said um, Th1 type, Th2 type, we talked about pro-inflammatory cytokines, we got anti-inflammatory signs. So you wanna go and revisit that lecture. It's gonna help you because we will start discussing pro-inflammatory versus anti-inflammatory. We're gonna talk about Th1 type and Th2 type. So these are important. When I said about homing, so all these fights are important. So I just like a V for victory. Integrin and selectins were very important when we especially talked of uh, neutrophils because they are other cells that express, not these are not the only cell that express, but it's like a, what do you call a docking thing, anchor, anchoring thing that anchor has to go so that it's stable, okay? And you can see that uh, these are the major one for homing these are for attachment, integrin and selectins. You know, selectins are expressed on uh, epithelium or endothelium, and integrins are expressed on cells like neutrophils. And then integrin and selectin, they can also act, emokines can act homing to bring back where the cells were. Okay, now having said that, let's see what happens in real time. <clears throat> so I'm gonna explain that to you, what happens in the real time so in this case, this is a uh, B cell membrane, right? This is surface, these are the surface markers. This is a BCR, we already know immunoglobulin. And all of a sudden we see a bacteria. We see a bacteria or pathogen in this case. Now we see, B cell will come and look at it. So it's gonna bind to this one, right? And then the signaling will pass through that. We talked about these signaling. Ig alpha and beta signaling will like ignition is going to turn on the system. The car is running, engine is running, but it's not moving. So it's like initial ignition in terms of signal. Okay. Now what the body does is that it says, "Hey, it's good enough, but maybe the signal is too weak. You know, it's too weak. It's too big a bacteria. You know, it's too weak a signal. You want to have real." battery is down, you just want to have a real, you know, kind of starter. So what it does is that uh, some of the complement protein that we talked earlier, which are like sugar coated, they will come and opsonize the bacteria. And we talked about IgM and all. So they'll come and opsonize the bacteria. The smaller portion of complements, like C3, that's why we, uh, when we do the blood test, we look for C3, C3 components of the complements in the blood to find out if your complement is acting. So we attach this C3, it's gonna sugarcoat this bacteria, and then we have a receptor that's gonna hook on to this. So CD21, and we talk about one, two, three, four different kind of uh, uh, players over here, they act together to enhance the signal, right? So 
you can see accelerator over here. So this is like an accelerated. And the way we do it in biochemistry, remember in uh, enzyme assays and so on and so forth, you want to activate something, you want to phosphorylate the enzymes. And if you want to deactivate some, something, do have to dephosphorylate the things. We talked about that in muscle contraction, phosphorylation, dephosphorylation, contraction versus relaxation. The basic concept of enzymatic reaction comes over here. So we have one signal coming from the BCR, and we have a BCR coming from the other signals over here causing phosphorylation of CD19. So then the enhanced signal through the BCR. And why do we need to know that? Because we will have different drugs acting on different portions. The more complicated, the more drugs we have, the more control in terms of maneuver is, because you never know if you block one side, body will use an other alternative pathway. So you cannot, there's no magic bullet. There's no one, one key. Just open the door, one key. No, that doesn't happen in the body. We, every day we're discovering more. That's why if you give one drug, it's not good enough. So you may want to come with a plethora of drugs. I mean, unfortunately or fortunately, that's how the body works. So enhanced signal through BCR with the help of a B-cell co-receptor. In this case, uh, 21 binds to the complement and all other end up having phosphorylation CD19 and you have basically a good immune response for taking care. Just when you thought phagocytosis is simple, our cells will take, that's what we used to think 20, 30 years ago. Bacteria comes over here, cell will take them and kill them. No, that doesn't happen. So it's more of a complication over here. So that's enhanced. And then <clears throat> this, is a, this is a very <coughs> overview, brief, very brief <coughs> slide that I think I may have shown you earlier as well in physiology of signal transduction. So this is a, whatever you saw in the piece was extracellular or membranous by part. But again, remember the signaling has to come from here all the way to the nucleus because you want to have an effective response. You have to have a response. So effective response are many. There's many different responses that we have. So what happens is at least for today's lecture, before I go in detail, I want you to at least remember some of the proteins that are there and some of the enzymes that they are there. So, uh, as I said earlier, it is not mandatory for, for BCR to just engage one BCR. There are hundreds of BCR, so more than one BCR can engage and take care of uh, this particular bacteria. Whatever, the signal comes over here. And then, once these parts get phosphorylated, that you can see like a brown thing over here, that basically shows phosphorylation. The arrow shows phosphorylation. So that's a signaling cascade that initiates. So one enzyme phosphorylates the other enzyme, and the other, and the other, and the other, right? So in, in intracellular signaling pathway, I mean, I can just tell you the current therapy for HIV is blockers of these enzymatic pathways. And there's not only one, we call cocktail of blockers. So we put them together and give it to HIV patient. Okay, now <clears throat> in this case, three major components: Syk, Syk, Fin, Lin, and Btk. Btk, I already told you, there is a disease. So these are the three major signaling molecules that we are working on. Most of us who are in research either are working in we call them Syk, but it's Syk. A fin or lin over here, and each of them has a particular site where phosphorylation takes place. So when the activation comes, that site gets phosphorylated before the signal will be transmitted. So in this case, when the signal comes over here, they phosphorylate and they attach to PLC gamma 2, PLC gamma 2 over here, and that basically is a funny part over here. Interestingly, the signal goes in and then comes out on the membrane. So we don't really know how the homeostatic, how the, why the body does it. But this is how it does. It goes, takes the signal in and then brings it out. out. Just like electron uh, transport chain or Krebs cycle, some of the events are happening on the membrane of mitochondria. So in this case, what's happening is the signal goes again on the membrane. And membrane, then there are 
PIP2s. So these are PIP2 and diacylglycerol. These are two major players on the membrane. And they initiate many different pathways. So right now what I'm trying to emphasize upon you for the basic is that when you get a signal, you got a co-signal, it goes to phosphorylate three important components, which are psych, kindlin, and BTK. They basically lead on to activation of two molecules, which are PIP2 and uh, diacylglycerol, which is a DAG. So three, two, and then they initiate three pathways, three important pathways. So it's just like go, I mean, I have a mnemonic for that. Those of you, maybe many of you may not know how the engine, uh, the car engine transmission works. But those of you who are interested, they can benefit from that. And I don't want to spend much time on that. But once you crank ignition, what happens afterwards? It's pretty much the same kind of analogy for the cell when you get antigen, what happens inside. Things are not that simple. You just plus, uh, turn the key on and you know, everything just start running. But by the end of the day, you don't, you don't want to turn on the engine. You want the car to move. Okay, so that movement will be effective response. And there are a lot of players involved in this case. Now, three important uh, pathways. For now, just remember IV3, protein kinase C, and RAS. So these are going to be three different classes of drugs that they're going to teach you in signaling pathways. Okay, very, very over, I mean, I'm just oversimplifying. IP3, protein kinase C, and RAS. But what you will see over here is, if I was to ask you, which one of the three utilizes calcium? So you can guess from here, IP3 is the one that utilizes calcium, and there's a calcineurin. And if you go back and look at the signal transduction molecule in the heart cardiac muscle, you will see the role of calcium and calcineurin there. I still remember that kind of uh, cartoon I showed it to you, the pump, the calcium pump. So that's where the calcineurin is important. So regardless, this is not that simple pathway. There are hundreds of steps over here and uh, we will take you through eventually. But what happens is that regardless of these steps, they cause, because by the end of the day, you, got pro you have to have protein synthesis, right? So they call activation of transcription factors. So they are transcription factors. Many of them, for this class, I just want you to know three important transcription factors. So I'm going to ask you which of the following are transcription factors. Number one, NF kappa B. NF kappa B, N fat, and AP1. So these are the three important transcription factors that will basically transcribe whatever effector response has to take place. So, so far, I've told you about the outside in signaling path pathway, phosphorylation over here, and then there's a chain of signaling pathway through all these specific enzymatic pathway where there's a phosphorylation taking place, leading to membranous event, leading to three important pathways, all terminating into activation of transcription factor. And I said three important transcription factors that will initiate what needs to be initiated in terms of transcription. And then we have synthesis of protein. I will not spend much time on that. I'm going to post it to you because I don't want to teach you how the car works. I'll leave it there. But I, we can see from here three important uh, things over here, psych, finlin, and BDK. And then from there, the events go to the membrane part. We have PIP2 change to DAG, and then we have three pathways over here, IP3, PKC, RAS, and they're going to lead to three important transcription factors. Those of you who are interested, they can Google it, actually, it's from Google. Okay. The other important thing is break. So you want to control. It's like a balance. You want to trip the balance. That's, that's the key over here. So the previous slide show you accelerator. Now I'm going to tell you a break. Okay, so the same bacteria comes over here, and this time it sees the BCR receptor B cell, and now we want to stop production because you don't want to have uncontrolled production of antibodies. Okay, you saw a bacteria, you make an antibody, so you initiate, but do you need to stop? Yeah, of course. 
But if it doesn't stop, there's maybe a problem, genetic disorder. That's what's one of the genetic disorders show multiple myeloma. So you, your antibodies are out of control. So what happens is, so what we have is, then we have a very specific receptor on the cell membrane called CD32, right? And this CD32 will block when it attaches with an antibody that sees an antigen. So it is going to transmit. So if, if this particular antibody, remember I told you the antibodies sit on the cell membrane, so they see the antigen with the fab portion, but they sit on the membrane with FC portion when there are FC receptors there. So this is FC receptor. It sits over there. It now initiate another series of enzymes which are not phosphorylated. They are not kinases. And I think I'm pretty sure that you've done that bunch of biochemistry to know differences between kinases and phosphatases. Okay, you, you, we've been taught about protein tyrosine kinases and MAP kinases and so on and so forth. So these are important signaling uh, molecules, even if you're not, maybe they're going to cover it up in this semester. But one such important thing is phosphatase. So if you have phosphatase, it's going to chew up the phosphate, so there will be no phosphorylation. So if there's no phosphorylation, it is a negative signal over here. So that negative sig signal will block the antibody production. Does that make sense? So we have a proper control there. Stimulation, let it go. Block, stop it. All through following through those particular molecules. Okay? So,